All right, it is 11.02, so we will go ahead and get started here. All right, so welcome to the second of our two September monthly PO calls. Our agenda for today will be to go through the specialist recruitment, uh, as well as the 2024 PCP recruitment. And then uh, we'll discuss a little bit about how we are revising the language around our medications initiative. And we have a few announcements and housekeeping my, uh, reminders uh, to make sure all of you guys are up to date on. All right, so uh, for our specialist recruitment, uh, we will be recruiting endocrinology and nephrology practices uh, for that uh, January 1st, 2024 start date. So the timeline on this is uh, the recruitment will open on September 15th, uh, which was three days ago, uh, excuse me. Uh, so recruitment opened on September 15th, excuse uh, the difference in language there, um, and it is available on the administrative portal. Um, on that administrative portal, a list of your eligible practices, the endocrinology and nephrology practices will be displayed. And then there's an option next to each one of them to click enroll in MCTTD. And that's how you go about enrolling them. Um, we will have enrollment open through November 3rd. And so if you do want to add those practices, please make sure to get into the admin portal and recruit them uh, by that November 3rd date. For uh, the support that we're offering for that recruitment process, so um, we are going to be hosting uh, and have recorded sessions for the endocrinologists and nephrologists, and those will cover just basic information like what the CQIs are, what MCTT, MCTTD is specifically, and what our three main initiatives are, what the requirements are for those specialist practices to participate, as well as how participation in VBR works and how uh, the incentives operate. Um, and so those two different meetings for endocrinology will be on October 10th from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. For nephrology, that hold has already been sent out. That is uh, on September 26th from 5.30 to 6.30. Um, please do forward those calendar invites um, to any of the endocrinology or nephrology practices um, that you think may be interested or that you're planning on recruiting um, and so that they can attend those or watch the recordings of them. Um, all right. So these are the requirements for new specialist and nephrology, new nephrology practices, excuse me. And so uh, these include things like the submitting the name of the clinical champion and practice liaison. Uh, just as a reminder, clinical champions must be a nephrologist for nephrology practices. Um, they can't be like a care manager or something like that. Um, completing the practice change readiness assessment by March 1st of 2024. Again, just 20 minutes to complete typically. Um, participate on the in the onboarding call with MCTTD, um, which will be scheduled after um, all practices have been determined which ones are, are being brought on board. Attend the spring 2024 regional meetings. So that attendees, attendees list includes the primary care practices, clinical champions, as well as the nephrology and endocrinology clinical champions. And that will be in uh, April and May of 2024, depending on your region. And then attend the 2024 Fall Nephrology Clinical Champions Meeting, which will be sometime around October or November of 2024. Complete the brief self-reflection exercise. Um, and then that is going to be by each physician due by November 30th of 2024 as well. Um, we will be distributing a template for that as we get closer to that time frame. And then respond to requests as per usual from the coordinating center. Um, and then present on your site's implementation of the quality improvement initiatives, either at a collaborative wide meeting if requested. That's just something that we put out calls for, similar to like how we put out calls for attending and serving on uh, um, panels and things like that. But that's not a, a set thing. Um, for endocrinology, it's very, very similar, just mostly with the change from nephrology to endocrinology. Um, so same thing with submitting the, the individuals, attending the trainings, completing the practice change readiness assessment, attending the regional meetings and the endocrinology clinical champions meetings, uh, completing that reflective learning communications uh, activity, and then responding to requests and presenting if and uh, only if uh, requested. And so these slides, as per usual, will be sent to you guys so you'll be able to see these tables and reference them, but they're largely identical between endocrinologists and uh, nephrologists. The 2024 PO and PCP recruitment. So we will be uh, recruiting new POs as well as new primary care practices in early 2024 for that September 1st, 2024 start date. So the timeline on this recruitment for PO, new POs and uh, PCPs in January 2024, we will be hosting informational sessions for new POs. In January 2024 as well, we will have a new introduction to MCTTD practice, or for practices video available that'll be under five minutes and can be sent out to your practices to kind of give a high level overview of what MCTTD is and what to expect. Um, at the end of the month in January 2024, eligible practices should be shared um, uh, 
eligible practices shared with new and current participating POs. And so just let us know which ones are going to be enrolled. Between February and April of 2024, um, recruitment opens officially for that. And then in September 1st of 2024, they'll begin their first VBR year. Um, and then we'll have new trainings available for those practices. Uh, the trainings for the CGM initiatives and medications and low carbohydrate diets will be recorded and updated um, and available starting at the end of that September 24 timeline. Um, all right, so to talk a little bit about our revised language for the medications initiatives. And so up until now, as most of you are probably familiar, we've referred to the medications initiatives as increasing prescribing of SGLT2 and GLP-1 receptor agonists. That's still true, um, but what we're going to be using is more guideline-directed therapy language. And so what we're going to be kind of uh, shifting towards is aligning medication prescribing with guideline-directed care, which is really what we've been all along. And that guideline-directed care really is increasing the utilization of those medications. But we're going to be adding a couple of different items to that that includes, uh, includes deprescribing of insulin and sulfonylureas when appropriate. It includes utilizing GLPs for patients that have comorbidities that are appropriate for them, such as ASCBD and utilizing SGLT2 inhibitors for patients that have uh, CKD and things like that. And so it really gets to more of the guideline-directed therapies for those medications rather than simply stating increasing prescribing of them overarchingly. And so you'll see some revised language regarding the medications initiatives on our website as well as on tools that you use. And so just wanted to give you guys a heads up as to the context behind that change. Nothing is really changing with how MCTTD functions or the MCTTD main initiatives, but that language will be updated as well. Um, all right. So, um, so this is a little bit more detail on that. So um, I talked a little bit about this in, uh, on the last slide, but this really aligns more closely with how the American Diabetes Association uh, discusses these types of things. And so, um, like I said, the idea here is really for these medications to be prescribed as in concordance with patient uh, comorbidities as well as patient-centered prescribing. And so uh, we really wanted to make sure that we're aligning with how the ADA and other professional organizations are referencing these prescribing, uh, this prescribing rather than simply saying they're increased use. All right, some reminders and announcements. For the VBR metric focus for this 2023 VBR year, these are the POs that have selected the different uh, um, focuses. So you can see that 10 POs have selected the medications focus, 15 have selected the CGM focus, and then the three here have selected the low carbohydrate diet focus. And so over the next couple of slides, we're going to talk about the timelines and objectives for each of these um, based off of which VBR metric focus you've selected as a PO. So for uh, meeting with clinical champions, the first step in this, and this is uh, for both the medication and CGM focuses, is to meet with your practice clinical champions and set a target rate or develop your goal, right? Develop your quality improvement plan. Um, the timeline for this should be to meet somewhere between September 28th and November 15th of this year. Um, so by that November 15th time, um, each PO um, should go in and answer the questions that'll be on the next slide. And those will be available in the admin portal. Um, and then for low carbohydrate diet POs, POs that have selected that as their initiative, we have already sent out an invite for you guys last week um, to meet with us, the coordinating center, in order to discuss patient reported outcomes and the resources and support that you guys need um, in order to operationalize your quality improvement objectives. So uh, for those medications and CGM initiative folks, so um, what we're hoping to see um, uh, as you're developing these plans is, uh, for example, what is your, if, if you're trying to increase prescribing of these medications, what we're looking to see in a goal is something along the lines of, we aim to increase prescribing of SGLT2 inhibitors from 8 to 12% for patients with type 2 diabetes who have impaired kidney function. Something that's measurable and objective um, and makes sense with regards to the medication's mode of action. Um, and then we'll also hope to see in those questions that are available on the admin portal, um, how you determined the target population for improvement, what considerations were put into making those goals, and how you're thinking about going about that quality improvement plan. Similarly for CGMs, something along the lines of what is your target rate for increasing CGM prescribing? Um, 
And then a possible response would be to aim, we aim to increase CGM prescribing from four to eight percent with uh, for patients with a BMI over 30 who are starting a new diet plan. Um, and then similarly, how you went about determining your target population and plans for the quality improvement uh, objectives. Um, all right, so goal submission, again, that is deadline of November 15th, and that is available in the admin portal. If you need help or support in setting a target goal, please reach out to us. We would be more than happy to have a one-on-one -on -one call with your PO to talk about it and go through the options with you guys. Um, that's something that we would love to do, um, and we'll meet with you um, as that as your questions and concerns arise. We can meet with you more than once as well if, if uh, uh, more questions come up. So regarding uh, a couple of updates to the data dashboard, the patient data dashboard, um, the next enhancement will be released on October 10th, um, and that will have data updated through June 30th of this year. Um, some additional enhancements of the features, um, the last date of A1C and BMI will be added to the patient list um, that you can um, download. Um, that was a request directly from one of the participating POs um, in order to be able to um, have a list of when patients were last, uh, had a last A1C taken. Um, and then the big one will be the introduction of nephrologist attribution. Um, so now your nephrology practices will be listed in your uh, patient data dashboard instance, and uh, you'll be able to see all of the different participating practices, all the different participating nephrologists. Um, and then you could also get your clinical champions at your nephrology practices access now if you would like or if they would like access. And so once that is released on uh, October 10th, if that's something you would like to do is to get them access, please do reach out to me um, and I can help facilitate that. You can also, if you are the approver um, for your PO, you can reach out to them directly and have them complete the MDC uh, user access request form, that Excel file. Um, and then you can send it to MDC directly, the accounts team, um, if you are the, the approver for your PO. All right, so uh, a couple of updates here on the PO quarterly reports. And so a big thank you to everybody that responded to the survey about the PO reports. Uh, your feedback was incredibly helpful. We will be instituting those uh, changes and requested uh, additions to the October reports. And so it's just some examples of these. Uh, practice level reporting will be from June 2022 through June 2023 for the upcoming report. And that'll include metrics on SGLT2 and GLP1 prescribing, CGM prescribing, as well as insulin and sulfonylurea prescribing. We'll include PO rank de-identified, of course, um, from June 2022 on those items as well, including A1C and BMI, um, as well as trending data at a PO level um, for medication prescribing, uh, CGM prescribing, as well as insulin and sulfonylurea prescribing. So that'll be um, in the format of uh, a run chart. And then these next reports will be available in October uh, following, like I said, that October 10th data update and enhancement. So for our spring regional meetings, as most of you are probably aware by now, these are the dates for the different regions. Um, holds have been sent out to everybody for all meetings except for Trevor City. Um, we're still getting a contract signed with the venue for them. So as soon as that is signed and confirmed for location, the, the hold for that will go out. Um, we are continuing to try to schedule these out as far in advance as possible. Um, so if you have not already, you'll start to notice holds being sent to you guys for both spring and even fall 2024 um, so that you guys can have as much notice as possible to allow for the most robust attendance by practice clinical champions as possible. Um, we know that traveling and attending those in-person meetings is, is burdensome and requires advanced planning. So hopefully that assists uh, your practices a little bit at least with being able to attend. Our next MCTTD learning community event is coming up uh, a week from today on Monday the 25th. That's going to be led by one of the MCTTD content experts, Dr. Jonathan Gavison, who is a family medicine physician um, who focuses on patient motivation. And so he's going to be giving a talk on that. Um, if you have not and would like to, please feel free to email us any specific examples where you've struggled in the past um, with regards to patient motivation. And Dr. Gavison will include those as examples in his uh talk and provide tips and tricks as to how you could consider going about addressing those concerns. The new PO scorecard and BBR metrics, um, as of September 1st, these are now available on the administrative portal. Um, and so just as an FYI, um, the following events, as you can see listed here, 
have already been retroactively applied uh, to count for credit for the new uh, VBR year. Um, so at the physician level, attendance at the last three months uh, um, learning community events, the June, July, and August ones um, will count towards that for 2024. At the practice level, uh, the data dashboard and jumpstart interviews, if you completed one of those um, after that time frame, those will count for that as well um, if you had not had to use it for your um, 2023 requirement. And then at the PO level, participation um, at either of the learning community panel discussions uh, that were listed above here for um, both the June and August learning community events. If you served on the panel for that, that satisfies your PO level requirement, as well as uh, participating on the CGM panel at the collaborative wide meeting this past June in Lansing. All right, so uh, the PO Monthly Digest. So one of the things that we heard um, multiple times on our PO one-on-one -on -one annual calls um, is that it would be helpful to have a digest, a monthly digest of all the important information that you need to know, similar to the information that we include on this call, but in digest form. Um, and so we will start doing that. Um, we'll be creating that um, and it'll be available um, at this link on these slides, which again, you guys um, have been sent these slides. Um, and then we'll be, we're also working on a PO checklist that um, will be incorporated on our, our website. Um, and that will include all of the different items that uh, your PO and practices need to meet as far as your VBR items. Um, and you'll be able to use that and check off items as they're completed. So the regional meeting registrations, um, as a reminder, as a part of the PO scorecard, um, we are asking you to ensure that your clinical champions have registered at least two weeks in advance. Um, and that, again, on your administrative portal on the home page, you can click uh, to see who has registered and which of your clinical champions have yet to register. Um, and then we ask that after you review that list that you do follow up with those clinical champions that have not yet registered um, and make sure that they get registered ideally within two uh, ideally uh, two weeks in advance of the of their meeting. All right. And so, for example, this is what that looks like. So there are eight practices listed below um, not yet registered for regional meetings. Click here to review those practices, uh, to view those practices who are already registered. Click to open your email client and send an email to all practices not yet registered. So that's a link that you can use to generate an automatic email that will populate um, uh, all of the different practices, clinical champion email addresses that have not yet registered to make it as simple as possible for you guys to reach out to them. Um, and let them know that they have not yet registered and to please do so. So on the PO scorecard um, regarding BMI submission, you have likely seen a couple of emails come from us. Um, and so as we've talked to some of you guys about this, you've noted that uh, BMI and A1C submission uh, that as we talked to you, excuse me, about BMI and A1C submission, you've noted that BMI is no longer uh, a supported field for submission. Um, and so one of the things we did was we talked to Blue Cross directly about this. And so we did want to clarify, you are still able to submit BMI as a part of the PPQC data. Um, the fields were not themselves removed. Um, they're just no longer incentivized by HEDIS. Um, and so submitting them through PPQC is still the preferred way to submit them uh, through that data architecture. You can also submit BMI through the supplemental EMR data. Um, that field is not listed, but we did, like say, talk to Blue Cross Blue Shield, and they have assured us that um, it can still be sent and that they are actually going to add it back in starting May 2024 uh, to allow that as a, a more clear format for you guys. Um, so our ask to you is to continue to please submit uh, BMI. Um, it is tied, as you know, to 5% of your PO scorecard. Um, uh, which is that uh, goal of increasing the BMI submission. If you have any follow-up questions with that, please do reach out to us directly. We can, we'd be happy to set up a meeting with you guys to discuss more in depth, um, but do please continue to submit BMI via either PPQC or the EMR data, the supplemental EMR data. All right, so uh, coming soon, exciting announcement or a fresh look and feel to our website. And so um, at the upcoming regional meetings, we'll be de debuting this. And so we'll be showing uh, the new format. The links will all be the same. So nothing that you guys need to go in and update bookmarks for. So no worries about that. Um, but it will uh, be refreshed and updated and have a considerable new look and feel. Um, all of the different tools will still be there. Uh, Everything that you're used to will still be there in some capacity, but likely in a much more user-friendly, user-centered way. And so we're really excited about this, and we think that you guys are going to really like it. 
Here's are a couple of screenshots from it. So for example, the resource library um, will have an updated look and feel to it, um, as well as new information and support, something along the lines uh, on, this health, on the health equity focus of MCTTD. You'll see some additions to the member dashboard where, like I mentioned previously, there'll be checklists for the different requirements that you'll be able to actively interact with, checking off things as they are completed. Um, and so uh, you'll actually be able to see your specific items there as well. All right, so um, for our upcoming October work group, um, uh, these are going to be a little bit different than you're used to. Typically, MCTTT does not host uh, meetings during uh, the PO meetings during regional meeting months. However, we are going to use these meetings to have our uh, web developer, Ryan Karpus, uh, meet with everybody to do a walkthrough of the um, revised patient admin, or I'm sorry, excuse me, the um, admin portal, um, and do answer any questions that anybody has and kind of go through and do a more in-depth training um, and help you guys navigate it and locate things uh, and, like say, answer any specific questions that you have. And those uh, two dates will be offered on Monday, October 9th and Wednesday, October 11th. All right. Um, with that, any questions for me or MCTTD in general um, prior to shifting over to the inhale portion of the meeting? All right. Sean, should I make you a host? That would be great. Thank you, sir. All right, really quickly, can everyone see my uh, my screen okay? Yep. Perfect. Just give everyone a couple minutes prior to starting. Sean, you should be a host now. Are you all set? Uh, yes, I am good. Thank you, sir. All righty. Take care, everyone. You too. All right, looks like we're down to about 22. Uh, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, we've got a trimmed down version of our updates today. Um, so we will just start off by going through our agenda. Uh, we've got announcements and updates. Uh, we've got our patient advisory board information that we'll cover, uh, the measures and data hub. We'll go over PO and practice updates, portals and websites, upcoming events and important dates, and then have some time for questions and discussion. Um, again, as always, if you do have any questions, you can always post those in the chat as well, or uh, feel free to uh, to ask away. So starting off with announcements and updates, uh, we'd like to begin with some staffing updates. We have some really, really exciting news. Uh, so April Proudlock, uh, Proudlock, excuse me, has joined the Inhale team uh, as our new program manager. Uh, we've got her on the call uh, today, as well as uh, Kelly from our team and Carla. Uh, so I'd just like to extend a warm welcome for April and like to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself and say, say a few words. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is April Proudlock, as Sean mentioned. I am the new PM for Inhale. I'm really excited to be here. I um, have worked within the CQIs for about the past 12 years. Um, so I'm just excited to meet all of you and be part of this team. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you very much, April. 
All right, starting off with um, Carla. Uh, Carla is actually going to be out on medical leave. It's actually quickly approaching, um, coming up on October 6th. Um, so Megan Spiroff will be covering Carla's email until she returns from medical leave. So you can continue using uh, her email, Carla at inhalecqi.org, or as always, the contact at inhalecqi.org um, as they are monitored, monitored regularly. Uh, Megan and her team will work to address all questions as quickly as we can, but please continue to reach out with any questions, concerns, or thoughts that you may have. Uh, our regional meetings, uh, it's crazy that it's already uh, mid mid September uh, but they are quickly approaching and they're they're now full um, everyone should have already registered but if not please let us know as quickly as possible we've got Kelly on the call who's done a wonderful job organizing that uh, but it is very important um, as we need those final numbers to ensure accurate uh, accounts for the event space and to, and for food. So again, uh, if you've not already registered or are having any issues, please let us know as quickly as possible. And then Kelly, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to share with that. Just to um, give I you just wanted to say that um, depending on which meeting that you are attending, you will be getting an email three days beforehand um, with notification for the CE CME process part of the regional. And then also just, you know, the friendly reminder of where you need to be, the times, and all of that good stuff. So um, if the people did not register, if you registered for your people and you used your email address, I'm going to please ask that you make sure that you send that information on to them so that they are well aware of everything that they need to know for both the CME and where exactly they are going in the time that they need to be there. Perfect. Thank you for that, Kelly, as always. Um, our resource bags, uh, they are still readily available. Um, remember one per practice, please, and you can expect, um, or you can request those, excuse me, uh, via email. Um, shipping time is going to be dependent on, on supplies. Uh, we order our chambers that we uh, put in our resource bags through Michigan Medicine. And uh, there's another source for us also, but um, they do take time for those shipments to come in. Uh, so it may not go out immediately upon your, your order. And again, we apologize for those delays and, and we are certainly working to, uh, to hopefully help to expedite that in the future. Um, our education working meetings, uh, those are held every other, uh, every other Monday from four until five. We actually have uh, our next one is today. Uh, if you are interested in participa uh, participating, please contact Brenna, and she will provide you with the meeting information. Uh, we're putting together um, provider information, patient education, resource tools, and making sure that the information that we're sharing with you, um, with you all and your practices makes sense. So again, uh, that is an open invite, and please uh, join if you uh, if you are able. Uh, inhale patient advisory uh, board. So Megan has actually been spearheading this. Uh, she is out today. Uh, so I am filling in. Uh, but just a couple of things. Uh, we are working to recruit uh, for our 15 uh, member patient advisory board with patients who have asthma, COPD, or are a caregiver of a pediatric asthma patient or patient with asthma or COPD. Um, so if you know of anyone uh, that uh, please, that is a, a um, open invite. Um, we also have upcoming meetings that are gonna be held on September 27th and September 29th. Again, those are quickly approaching as well. Um, so please keep those in mind. And we're, again, we're asking for patients or caregivers uh, for those types of patients. Uh, Megan actually sent two emails, uh, one was on August 24th and uh, the other was on uh, September 6th, reminding us, um, or reminding um, you all that the patient advisory board that we're looking for, uh, again, patients. Um, so if you could please share that with your, our participating practices, we would uh, certainly appreciate it. And then again, if you have any questions uh, regarding any of that, you can always um, email Megan. Uh, it's M-A-I-R-Good at med.umich.edu. So thank you again for your, your help with that. Data Hub updates, uh, enhancement release three from September 6, 2023. We're very excited to announce that the enhancements 
from this release did go through on September 6th, uh, which refresher medical and pharmacy claims to the end of May 30th, 2023. Uh, the great news is that our specialists are now added. So for those groups or POs that were a specialist only, they finally get data. Um, so allergies, uh, sorry, allergy, pediatric, pul pulmonologist uh, have now been added. Please, so please go through those uh, your list and look at your data. Let us know if you have any kind of issues that you're noticing at all, and we will make sure that we get those uh, those amended. Uh, we've looked through it thoroughly uh, multiple times, and we think we've caught everything. Uh, but again, if you see anything that d d doesn't look accurate, please let us know, and we'll make sure we get that taken care of. Uh, we did have an increase of over uh, 20,000 patients, so that's that's very exciting news. Uh, the updates also include the last fill date added for the short-acting beta agonist fills, fill measure and the oral corticosteroid, corticosteroid fill measures. And we've added supported and, uh, and documentation to better define the de uh, denominators for each of those measures. But again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and let us know. Uh, PO and practice updates. Uh, we actually shared this at our last PO monthly call, um, but we do have the link provided here. Um, and again, if you have any questions, we can certainly go through that. Uh, but we wanted to share the scorecard information again. Again, the link is provided. Uh, we did review um, several items, uh, but to briefly discuss the 2023-2024 PCP participation requirements uh, are there. Um, and then other asset measurement period of uh, 9 1 2023 through 8 31 2020, uh, 2024. Um, we've got a link uh, to document there, which will let you look through the details. But remember that in order to earn the VBR, there, there will be a minimal score of nine out of 14 points. Uh, it, uh, just a reminder, it is a scorecard now. So they will be participating in an inhale learning module, uh, reviewing inhale medications. Uh, you also need to, as a reminder, they need to attend both spring and fall regional meetings and then attend one speaker series event, which will, we will share additional information at a future meeting um, and then complete the practice resource assessment survey. Uh, and then there will be, uh, we will have bonus points available. Um, and again, there's going to be, uh, there must be uh, a minimum of nine points. All right, PO and practice recruitment, uh, which is again, quickly approaching. Uh, the next recruitment period is for specialists. So these are gonna be allergists, um, pediatric pulmonologists and pulmonologists. The recruitment opens on October 1st, 2023, and the agreements are due to inhale by December 1st, 2023. Uh, the participation VBR for the new practices and providers will start March 1st, 2024. And just remember to add those um, those marks, uh, those practices, and those positions as participating in the admin portal. Um, and again, we'll be sharing the specialist participation requirements soon. Um, they, those are, sorry, my mouse is frozen. Uh, those are um, developed. We're just working through the Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, to make sure that they are fully approved as we have to go through and make sure that they're fully vetted. portals and websites, the administrative portal um, upgrade. Uh, we're going to be creating a system for the participation requirements and the PCP requirements um, and soon to be specialist requirements. Uh, these will be kind of based on what MC2D, uh, the, their uh, reporting form. So we're really interested in um, you know, the feedback or any feedback that, that you have on those and things that you like or do not like. Uh, so again, please let us know. Uh, from your experience. Um, and, you know, we'll obviously make sure that we're working hard on making those um, work, uh, work well for your teams. Um, one important thing, uh, one important time is to check to make sure your PO team information is correct and complete. Um, also, you will now be listing the practice clinical champion and practice liaison. There's also another link again for the PO scorecard to check those requirements. Uh, so again, we went through this briefly at our last call, um, but let us know if you have any questions on that and we'll be sure to, to answer those. 
Upcoming events and important dates. Again, we've got regional meetings quickly approaching, um, very quickly approaching. So um, we're, you know, we're excited to meet with everyone. Um, we're going to, it's going to be a great edu educational opportunity and um, also a lot of time to gather your direct feedback. Uh, you can find a link to the agenda, um, which again, we shared at our last call. Uh, we have one document, just to be, to be clear, um, with all four meetings listed. Uh, the itinerary and in information is the same, but the speaker may be a little bit different. Uh, and there will be a CME opportunity, which we will review at the meeting as to how to gain CME. Our next uh, monthly phone call is going to be Monday, October 9th at 11 or on Wednesday, October 11th at 2 p.m. Uh, so again, you can mark those on your calendar if you haven't already. Um, and it, in addition, so you can put a hold on your calendars now, uh, we are proposing our spring regional meetings um, that will be held. I, um, currently, uh, we're thinking May 2nd through the 16th. Um, and as you can see, we're um, increasing the number of meeting opportunities, recognizing that our groups are expanding. So making sure that we've got um, enough uh, enough venues for, for everyone. Um, our upcoming Rochester Hills meeting, um, just so everyone is aware, and I think we've already talked about this, uh, we actually have over, over 100 providers. Uh, so again, we just want to make sure that for our future meetings that they're evenly sized so we can ensure uh, networking opportunities and, and meaningful interactions. Uh, we're also working to finalize these dates and we'll get the location information to you as soon as possible, but you can expect those in the near future. Uh, in addition to those dates, uh, we're proposing that our 2024 collaborative wide meeting uh, will be held on June 7th, 2024. Um, again, we're gonna uh, we're working to iron out internally those uh, you know the, all these specific dates. But as soon as we get those uh, dates specifically ironed out, we will send out communications uh, to everyone just so you can plan accordingly. But so you've got um, well advanced notice. So with that, I know we went through that fairly quickly. Um, from a question and discussion standpoint, just want to open it up to the team and see if anyone has any questions. I see there were a couple. Um, Carla had already responded to those. Uh, thank you, Carla. I just wanted to, um, the first question, um, Chelsea um, had asked, when will new 2024 VBR requirements be released for specialists? Uh, so by the end of this week, and then a, a secondary question, we have another round of recruitment for PCPs, and then uh, we will, uh, this will be due by June 1st, 2024. Just to cover those quickly. So we've got about 20 minutes uh, for our scheduled time. Um, again, happy to give all of you your, your time back, but if you do have any questions that you'd like to review and address um, on, on anything, uh, please feel free to speak up. And if not, then we can, again, give you some time back on a Monday. Not seeing any additional questions. Uh, team, April, Carla, Kelly, anything else you guys wanted to add or go through? We'll be sending the slides out by the end of this week for everybody. So the, the links will be available for you there. Perfect. Okay, well, if there are no additional questions, then we will uh, we will call this a meeting. Uh, thank you all very much for attending today. Uh, we hope you have a great week and uh, we'll we'll talk to you soon.